The White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce and SCC TV are proud to present Your Business Matters, dedicated to your business needs. The White Bear Area Chamber is a nonprofit business organization serving as advocates to the White Bear Area and its business community. Now, here's the Executive Director of the White Bear Area Chamber and the host of Your Business Matters, Tom Snell. Welcome to Your Business Matters, brought to you by the White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce. Each month, we interview community leaders and local business owners so you can be informed about the developments in our community. I'm pleased to welcome Patrick Christofferson, the new White Bear Township Clerk. Welcome, Patrick. I've got some questions that I want to ask you about your new role as the uh, township clerk in uh, the White Bear Township. And first of all, I wanted to know uh, the title. Township clerk is similar to what? Uh, it's essentially the same as what you'd find as a city administrator. All the responsibilities are the same, uh, and it falls the same place on an organizational chart within this type of, a, within this type of an organization. Oh, so, okay. I just yeah. wanted to start out with that. Yes. Now, uh, give me a brief background about uh, your work, um, some of the things that you've done before uh, you became uh, the new township clerk in the White Bear Township. Sure. So I basically have just over 20 years experience working with municipalities, uh, primarily in the state of Minnesota. Oh, okay. Um, I started back uh, in 1997 working specifically for townships up on, up on the North Shore of Minnesota for Lutz and Tofte and Schroeder. Uh, we ran a small uh, municipal organization as well as a nonprofit board for businesses up there as well. Oh, okay. So, so we, um, we, were, we were financed on a lodging tax uh, and a couple of small, small proceeds from sales tax up mm -hmm. there. Uh, and then that was about it. So I did 10 years up there. Um, since then, I've worked for, let's see, I worked out in Colorado for a year, <laughs> came back, and I've worked in uh, Wanamingo, Jackson. And then the last seven years, I worked as the county manager um, up in Canabic County, which is in, if everybody's familiar with Mora. Okay, that's so. up a little bit north here yes. of uh, the, the, uh, uh, the Twin Cities. You got it. Yep. yep. Now, what intrigued you about the uh, position with the White Bear Township? Well, I'll start with the personal selfish reasons. That's fine. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Um, personal selfish reasons are uh, my wife and two daughters, we had bought a... Uh, a house in Ham Lake. Uh, oh, okay, just a three, little bit north. Yeah, almost three years ago, and I had been going back and forth to Mora from Ham Lake. That's a long drive. It's a long drive, uh, especially in December, January, February. Uh huh. Um, and went, March. And March, yeah, especially <laughs> the last couple. But um, we moved there primarily because yep. our girls are are young. We wanted to get them in some good schools, um, so I wanted to really find something that was going to be closer to sure. home. Sure. Uh, the other reason is is that um, Canaba County is a is a wonderful county. Um, it's a beautiful county. Um, it's in East Central Minnesota, but it is one of the it's one of the poorest in the state. Oh, and we okay. just we did not have a lot of flexibility to do much of anything, but beyond immediate need for our residents. Okay. Um, so with White Bear Township, uh, I saw the opportunity to really kind of stretch my legs uh, mm -hmm. in some new directions that just weren't going to be available to me uh, okay. up in Kennebec. So. Okay. You know, what, are, what are some of the uh, priorities that you have over the next uh, few years, things that you want to accomplish? And I know you're brand new to this position, mm -hmm. but I would imagine that those are some of the questions that they asked you uh, yes. during the interview process. So what are you looking to do? Well, I'll tell you, um, I worked with Bill Short. Uh, the retiring clerk treasurer right. of 30 years uh, for almost a month. Incidentally, who married the city manager. White Bear Lake for City White Bear Manager, Lake. yes, right. Ellen, yes. who is a wonderful person as well. Right. Um, I worked with him for almost a month, and what I have discovered uh, in subsequent weeks since he has mm -hmm. left is that uh, he did a fantastic, marvelous job uh, of community economic development. Um, the, the township is, as you know, probably built out to 97% capacity. Oh, I did not know that. We are. Uh, we don't have a lot of room to do uh, anything new now. We do have a couple of new housing developments that are uh -huh. coming in. Um, but I think the primary responsibility um, are going to be twofold. Number one, we need to 
preserve Bill's legacy um, by strengthening our, um, our foundation, uh, meaning that our infrastructure needs to improve. And then uh, number two, uh, we need to start focusing on redeveloping um, a lot of the areas yeah, that he initially Yeah, because a lot had. of the, some of the houses, the housing stock in uh, the White Bear Township were built probably in the mid, late 50s, yeah. early 60s. Mm -hmm. And are there, uh, based on your previous work record that you have and the community that you came from, mm -hmm. uh, do you see anything that can be done essentially with that older housing stock? And what, what, uh, what is the future of those homes and how will that change the dynamic potentially of the uh, township community? Time to be honest with you, the housing part of it hasn't been the priority right now. Okay. It's been, it's been more the finding commercial redevelopment, industrial okay. redevelopment. All right. So, we, I, I mean, I think some of the, the first tax increment financing projects that Bill had initiated 30 years ago yeah. are now 30 years old and need some help. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to initiate some programs that are going to help some uh, redevelopment okay. uh, commercially within the township. Uh -huh. I, and I think we're addressing some residential challenges in terms of street projects. Oh, okay. Um, but nothing specific to housing. Okay, all right. So. Uh, and that kind of goes into the next question about uh, what are some of the things that you are looking to do that you didn't explain a little bit earlier to, uh, I guess you'd say, enhance community livability mm -hmm. and then also uh, some of the things with the uh, economic development area that you brought up uh, in the previous question if you want to in enhance that part of your answer. Sure. Um, so I, as I alluded to, I, our big proposal this next year is going to be our street project. We do believe that that is going to um, enhance our residents' livability within the township. We do have a lot of roads that are deteriorating um, and we think that not only is going to make it a more pleasant place to drive, we think that it will enhance the value of these uh -huh. homes. Sure. Um, in terms of an economic development uh, position, we have a couple of new housing developments that okay. we're working on. Um, that we hope to have going, if not by the end of this year, certainly the beginning sure. of 2020, for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, really interesting. Yeah. Uh, and uh, continuing on that issue, and this would impact both maybe residents that are looking for jobs, and then also um, some of the companies that are located in the township along uh, what would be Centerville Road. Yeah. Uh, we recently had a chamber program on. Uh, transit needs mm. and I'm wondering if that's something that is of interest uh, potentially to the township of enhancing or improving uh, transit opportunities bus service mm. uh, to certain parts of of the uh, community yeah uh, it is um, Tom or Diesel our, our town planner and I uh, have been uh, monitoring and in attendance and participating in the rush line yes uh, situation so I, I know that it is on our town board's radar. Um, I would probably put it third or fourth in terms of okay, priority so, right yeah, now. Yeah. So yeah, because we did have an event, and there were a number of. A bit, I don't think the rush line goes up here, but there was no, a, uh, there was a, there's a lot of interest in getting uh, bus, service bus service up along uh, that uh, corridor, corridor between. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Centerville Road up to up to uh, yeah, and you know I mean hours. that's a good stretch of businesses yep. that I know everybody's looking for help right now. Yeah, maybe that solves part of the problem. So yeah, yeah I mean that's going to be something that we will be yeah. looking so, into for sure. How about uh, how about opportunities to work with other uh, communities mm -hmm. is in and around White Bear Township? Do you look at that as a way to possibly? Uh, improve the uh, business climate for everybody. Mm -hmm. I do uh, and actually in the almost four months that I've been here now um, representatives from our surrounding communities uh, even beyond those that we provide services for yeah have been very very forthright in their wanting to work with us. Because it seems that your background is uh, has a, a more, uh, an appeal that goes beyond just one specific city that you've had experience in working with multiple communities. It yes. might be 
uh, that might look at certain things where they could uh, cooperate together. Yeah, and you know, I mean, specific to that experience, I mean, we had to we had to organize and cooperate between the three townships up on the shore uh -huh. for years. Yeah. Um, in Jackson, the thing that I think we're the most proud of is that we initiated a broadband service between multiple communities oh, okay. in southwest Minnesota. Um, so yeah. That's I, a big issue now, the broad, broadband up in the uh, areas outside the Twin Cities. And Correct. Some of the, uh, yep. We couldn't some get that done in, in yep. Kennebec, but it was yep. successful in Jackson. So any things that you can think of that uh, where maybe the township could uh, have a, uh, a uh, more enhanced relationship with maybe White Bear or Badness Heights, for example? Well, I think um, right now, just with the way uh, organizations yep. or governmental organizations yeah. work, we're all tied together anyway. Okay. Um, it, you know, we we share information, we share services. I know oh. we, are, we are very, very, ex we're extensively helping North Oaks okay. with a lot of their, their needs. So I, I think the not only the opportunity is there, but the, the necessity sure. uh, for us all to be working yeah. together is there. Now, and as you look uh, at, at your position more long term, mm -hmm. what are some of the challenges that you see uh, in, uh, in the township? I just, don't want to, I just want to screw the whole thing up. <laughs> Bill, Bill, Bill did such a nice job through, through multiple boards uh, multiple business climates or development pro climates. Sure. I mean, it, it, I mean, just looking at the breadth or the scope of yep. his work over 30 years. Um, I mean, that's intimidating. It, I mean, when you step back and you, yeah, if you go into Township Hall, you see 12 rows of files of all this work that he's done over the uh -huh, years. And, uh -huh. uh, I think my primary goal, my first few years that I'm within the township, yeah, is to maintain. Um, just a very, very a smooth running ship. Uh -huh. um, we've had good luck with, uh, with staff uh, being acceptable to the change. Uh -huh. uh, we had a changeover in our board. Uh, Bob Kermis retired. That's right. I, yep. After yep. He's a neighbor years. of mine. Yeah. So um, <laughs> we had a little bit of a change there. Ed yep. Prudhomme is now our board chair. And he's doing a wonderful job. Great. Um, so we got a little, we got a lot of transition that's going on. Sure. That I'm just hoping that I don't miss anything. Yep. yep. <laughs> so. yeah. No, I'm sure you won't. <laughs> now, on uh, somewhat on that uh, same issue, I uh, just wanted to bring up some of the dynamics with the uh, state of Minnesota, mm -hmm. and you know, there's always a uh, give and take on things like uh, uh, aid to local uh, communities or local cities and. Uh, could you uh, elaborate on that a little bit, what it means, and does it have any uh, impact on uh, White Bear Township? It does, uh, major. Um, we right now are working on two pieces of legislation uh, through Roger Chamberlain's office. Okay. To change language of a township to municipal township uh, or urban township. What does that mean? We would like to have that language changed in statute so that we have the ability to um, issue franchise fees to help offset some of our road projects. But most importantly, um, we are looking to qualify for local government aid. We right now get $15 of lo local government aid because we are technically only a township. Whereas you look to White Bear Lake City, they're getting $1.6 million every year from the state. Uh, North St. Paul, just down the road, gets yep. roughly that same amount. We, do, we, don't, we don't get that. And the, the, the thing that is probably the best argument for us to pursue that is that we are tied to all the same restrictions that the rest of those communities are to, say, Met Council. Uh, and we don't have the, the funding to offset those restrictions. Then so, why, uh, then uh, one of the questions I was going to ask is the difference between a city and a township. Mm -hmm. What is it? Very little, <laughs> especially <laughs> ours. I, um, if you go to, I, I've been to a couple of uh, Minnesota Association of Township meetings uh, where as being a new representative for a township, I went in for some training. Yep. And there are 1,800 townships in the state of Minnesota. We 1,800? Are the, 1,800. We are the only urban township. Um, we are, we've perform all the same functions as a municipality or a city, um, and we are an animal unto ourselves. So we, were tr we are trying to find a way through statutory language for our residents to maintain their independence as a township 
yet we would like to qualify for all the same things that our neighbors get. Well, if, they, so. if your neighbors get all that, then why don't you just change your name to a city? <laughs> don't put me in that spot. <laughs> okay. Right now. All right. Okay. <laughs> I just think the, the residents are, are, like I said, they're happy with the, their independence okay. as a township. Well, that, that brings me up to another question is, uh, from uh, what I've heard is uh, identity issues with the township. And I know that you've only been uh, with, the, uh, with your new position for just a few months, but that's come up over and over again is identity uh, with the township. And do you see any ways to enhance uh, the identity of the township as really a, an entity to itself? Boy, you know, I think we already have. I, okay. I mean, we, we're, we're very business friendly. Um, we've got wonderful recreational outlets. Um, the residents, um, the vast majority of our residents have been here for a long time. Yes. Um, so I, I think we've got a pretty established identity okay. already. Uh, whether or not that means we have to change what we are considered through the state yeah. is completely a completely different discussion. Yeah, okay. Uh, but, I, but I think our identity is pretty established and our residents are happy with that. Yeah, well, that's great. Yeah. That's nice to know. Um, do you, uh, what are some of the things, do you envision uh, ways for the township to uh, enhance their efforts in collaborating with the uh, local chamber of commerce? And I'd imagine that in your previous jobs that you've had relationships with various uh, business organizations. Yeah. You tell me, Tom. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, we, yes, we, we have, or I have uh, in the past been pretty heavily involved with our local chambers. Okay. Uh, and actually, um, the nonprofit part of the organization I work for up on the shore, I served as the executive director for essentially a chamber of yeah, commerce. Yeah, right. And and Bill Short was very active in yeah. the chamber, and Bob Kermes was yeah. very so, active. So and so. so we want to maintain good that level of presence and good. cooperation with the chamber. Yeah. that's for sure. The other uh, another question. That's great. Thank you for that answer. Mm -hmm. uh, another question I want to ask you is: I know that the township has a number of festivals and community activities. Are there opportunities for businesses maybe to have a, a table at some of these festivities or activities so that they can promote what they're doing to the overall uh, residential community of the township? Sure. We have township days in September. Okay. Which, which, of course, is probably the biggest opportunity for someone to have a presence. Okay. Um, we also have a couple of recreational projects that we're working on right now as far uh, specific to bike trails. Yep. Um, and also um, things having to do uh, recreationally with our Polo Lakes Park. Uh -huh. So we might have some opportunity for, for businesses to sponsor those types of things. Okay. So... But in township days, so they can actually have a table if they want, or uh, is there a, I mean, they can work with the township to maybe get mm -hmm. a table or something so sure. that they can also promote their, uh, their sales or opportunities for purchasing equipment or things to uh, various people. In the Let township. me find out for sure. Okay, but that I know sounds great. that in township days or th okay. community festivals like that, that's been available. Okay, thank yeah. you. Okay. Now, uh, the, the final question that I have here is if uh, somebody uh, wants to get involved uh, with the township, uh, can they apply for different boards and commissions, and what might those be? Yes. Uh, actually, we did, I would say, a very good job of recruiting new members for our EDAB this last couple months. And that means what? We've got, or so we've got commission members yeah. uh, that will serve on our economic development okay. advisory board. All right. uh, we also have a utility commission, which is very influential, a planning commission yep. uh, as well, uh, a park board. So we have at least four commissions or committees that I can think of okay. that uh, we are recruiting essentially annually. Okay. Uh, just because of the changeover in Great. seats. Okay, so. and so those are open to people that yep. might be interested in yeah. learning more about Check our website, yeah. you know, at the end or beginning of each year. Uh, okay. And we do uh, make announcements as to what's available. Okay, great. And then finally, if somebody wants to get a hold of you, uh, how do they do it? Um, Township Hall. I, I, I'm there essentially every day during the week, 8 to... Okay, great. Sometimes 10 o'clock at night, like okay. last night. Okay. So... Thank yep. you so much. You uh, uh, 
Patrick, yes. thank you for joining me on uh, Your Business Matters. You bet. Thank you very much. Before we leave, I have a quick announcement about an important chamber uh, community happening that will take place on March 22nd. Uh, the White Bear Area Chamber will host a breakfast meeting with the tax committee chairs from both the House and the Senate. And I know everybody is interested in taxes and what's going to happen with that. Uh, it will be at the Vadnus Heights Country Inn and Suites, which is located at 3505 Vadnus Center Drive and it runs from 8 to 9 o'clock. People interested in attending can register on the Chamber website, www whitebearchamber.com. I'm Tom Snell. Thank you for watching Your Business Matters. You've been watching Your Business Matters. For more information on this program or the White Bear Area Chamber, visit whitebearchamber.com or call 651-429-8593.